Hey, what's up guys, Boba Rail here, and today I've got yet another dead blog breakdown for the next game in the World War 1 game series, Isanzo. So, it's been a little while since we've gotten one of these, but this one is pretty jam-packed with information. Today, we're specifically looking at the officer role and how that will work as a class, while also learning about the strategic value slash use of flare guns. To start, let's look at the officer role's functionality in Isanzo. So, instead of having one squad leader per squad like the previous two games, Isanzo will have a team-wide limit for officers. However, with this overall reduction in body count, there seems to be an increase in individual power. I should mention though that with great power comes great responsibility, and just like any other game that places importance in a leadership role, there is an underlying concern of the effect a bad officer could have on the match's performance. But the devs seem to be aware of that risk, and in their words, we're looking into systems to check that officers are making use of the resources available to them. So at the very least, they're aware of this. Now, what resources specifically are they referring to? Well, equipment-wise, officers will have a pistol, which will of course vary based on class, but they'll also have a command whistle to order soldiers around, and finally, the all-important flare gun. When a flare gun is fired, its radius and location will be marked on the command map, accessible to officers exclusively. In this menu, you can call in anything from a small round of mortars to a massive airplane bombing run. However, it's important to note that each one of these supports is limited based on strength and duration, so they will be balanced accordingly, and you'll need to choose wisely about when and where you're going to use them. There may be some method of color coordinating using different colored flares to specifically allocate certain resources, but this aspect is still definitely considered a work in progress, and we don't have any specifics on how color coordination might work. One last thing about flare guns I really appreciate is that they took the time to make multiple models depending on the faction you're playing as, but I don't believe there will be any difference in functionality because of that. Now let's go back to that whistle, because it's pretty important. Sorry for the low FPS and quality of the GIF, but here you can generally see that there will be a round menu to indicate where to give certain attack or defend orders, and apparently the trench whistle can also be used to instantly respawn your squad mates. This is really cool because it should help make squads more cohesive as units, because before in Verdun and Tannenberg, dying at the same time could make it so somebody has to wait for like 30 seconds, and that time, even though it doesn't seem like a lot, could be the difference between being right up in the action and having to walk the full length of a battlefield. The primary benefit that the article indicates of this is that it will allow squad leaders to use their small scale commanding of a squad in closer coordination with larger things like the aforementioned artillery strikes. This seems to all be moving the direction of the game to be more communication focused and also make the gameplay more faithful to the historical tactics of World War 1. Specifically, creeping artillery barrages are now much more possible to coordinate. Generally, all of this just gets me really excited because small scale and large scale tactics working together is what makes games like Squad or Hell Let Loose so enjoyable, and this really seems to be taking some of those elements and implementing it in its own unique way. Now one more thing. Every class will have a specific set of perks that will vary the efficiency an officer will have at certain tasks. Here you can see the icon and description of two of the choosable perks, the Frontline Officer perk as well as the Staff Officer. One allows you to spawn on any other squad officer, while the other lets you take more of a commander role and make more personally and specifically drawn orders on the map. How that will work on console I'm very curious of, but we'll have to wait and see for that. The ending message of this dev blog is that next time we'll get more details on the specific kinds of support we'll be able to call in, so stay tuned for that. Also, sorry if this video is a little later than usual, I had some very exciting new things start up this week both in my personal life and in the YouTube scene, so if you follow the channel as a whole and not just my Isanzo stuff, I'm sure you'll be getting a lot more stuff to come. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today, this has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.